looking at the Blackboard Assignment 6, which is the design of a staff development workshop. Uh, it would be a module, a one-time workshop that you are presenting. Some of you may be doing that, but many of you will only be designing this as a simulation. In other words, what you might present as a workshop for your school because I know that everyone in this class is at a different place professionally. So I wanted to make sure you understand the importance of this particular assignment. First of all, it is the designated artifact for your Master of Instructional Technology portfolio. It is the designated artifact. Uh, for those of you who are in the Master of Library Science, it also, I believe, has been approved by the Library Science faculty as the artifact for your portfolio, for your degree. Others, like perhaps in the reading program, check with your program advisor to see if you need to include this in any of your culminating projects or portfolios. So the importance of this is based on the fact that with a master's degree, you are a teacher leader. And as a teacher leader, you will provide uh, very often uh, peer teaching and mentoring to new teachers and workshops for others in your school. So it is important that you know how to design a workshop that's effective, meaningful, useful, and engaging for others in your school. Now there is a lecture here, so you want to be sure and read that, and I know that some of you have already uploaded your assignment, and I will be sending feedback as soon as I have completed grading for the needs assessment project. Here are the guidelines, and then here is a blank template that you will use. In the guidelines, let's open that. And you will see the headings here uh, really are just to guide you uh, through the process of writing up what this workshop would look like. You're writing this as though you were submitting a grant proposal, for example, or a proposal to your principal for presenting a workshop of some sort. I've even included the points, the amount of points that you'll earn for each section. I wanted to be very systematic about this so that you will not be puzzled in any way, but instead just focus on the content of your workshop. Here's a link someone had asked about the needs of adults uh, and the learner analysis of adult learners. If you have trouble opening this, I have added it right here as a direct link in Blackboard, so you should be able to open that. So let's go back and look at what's important for the staff development module, the staff development assignment. And once again, if you're not actually able to present a workshop, that is all right. Use what we have learned in this particular assignment in your readings. Learn what are best practices for designing staff development and apply that to your make-believe workshop. Of course, you'll just start out with a simple introduction, kind of give me some information on what, when, where, how of what you'll be presenting for the workshop. Now, for objectives and goals, in looking at your needs assessment, I could see where some were uh, confused about writing the objectives. The goal statement, pretty flexible. Uh, whatever goal you want to uh, determine, that will be fine. But objectives need to have measurable outcomes. So that means you're going to write the objective in a way that at the end of the workshop, you can determine whether or not teachers actually achieve the objective you stated. For example, you might say teachers will be able to create a spreadsheet 
and produce a simple bar chart as a instructional strategy in their social studies classroom. So by stating your objective in very concrete measurable terms, you're able to, at the end of your workshop, report back to your principal and say, 12 out of 15 teachers were able to complete that spreadsheet activity in my workshop. And that's what you want to be able to do. Tools and resources, please list uh, everything that you'll be using for the workshop. And I need to see some uh, kind of um, judgment behind this, a uh, rationale. Uh, so if you're using a particular website, I need to be able to see how that's useful for the content of your workshop. And that helps keep you focused and make sure you include only those things that are actually needed to achieve the goals and objectives that you've already specified. Now this part right here, engaging teachers, here is where you're going to describe what teachers will do to keep them motivated to pay attention in your workshop. Uh, if it's even an online module, some in the past have designed an online module, you still need to plan something that's going to keep people focused and paying attention and interested. And so you may have a simple activity, a game, a group project. Uh, one is sufficient because we know that workshops can't last very long. There's just not time for, uh, even if you did design a full day workshop, you wouldn't have a lot of activities planned, only enough to keep the teachers engaged. If you're doing a simple demonstration, you're going to show teachers how to set up class in Edmodo. Okay, that's a demonstration, but how do you keep the teachers engaged in that? Well, you can have them uh, follow along, set up their own class while you demonstrate. You could have them work in groups and help each other set up a, a class in Edmodo. You could have one or two teachers uh, demo what they did for the others to see. These are the kinds of things that you would do to keep teachers engaged. The learner analysis, here you're going to describe the attributes and characteristics of your teachers and this needs to um, reflect what you've done. For example, if you're teaching your teachers all in primary school, you want to probably plan activities that include small groups because primary teachers very often use group projects. So look at the, you know, analyze your adult learners and make a decision on what they need to be uh, interested in the workshop. Incentives. Now, often you will say, we are, I've been approved to offer one CEU or 0.5 CEU. Uh, other times people will simply say, I'm offering free educational apps or I'm offering refreshments, and that's okay, but your main form of getting teachers to participate is going to be, is it useful for them? What's in it for me? So think about that when you describe the incentives. The timeline, this is important because especially if you've never designed a workshop, you really need practice in determining how much time is needed for each portion of your workshop. Even if it's only 45 minutes, you need to determine in advance how many minutes for this part of the workshop, how many minutes for the next part of the workshop, and write that out. And it's uh, useful to keep you on track, but it's also helpful for those who come in late, and there'll always be people coming in late. If you've got a little agenda with the times listed, they know right where you are when they come into the room. I need to see copy a copy of at least one handout, which would be a think sheet or a job aid that you'll be using with your workshop, especially if you're doing like a demonstration. Teachers need something to take with them because they won't remember what you've demonstrated. And this part right here, method of assessment and evaluation, 
you may uh, include a survey that asks teachers, was this useful? Did you enjoy it? Was the presenter well uh, prepared? You can ask those kinds of questions, but those are satisfaction type uh, evaluation questions. For our purposes in learning to design professional development, you need to also plan a way to assess learning outcomes for teachers. So this could be in the form of an exit ticket with a sample lesson activity written out. It could be a demonstration by the teachers uh, showing what they've learned either during the workshop or at a later time, follow up with classroom visits. You could request student children's student work samples. Um, it could even be a very simple test. Uh, describe how Edmodo can be useful in your classroom and use that like an exit ticket perhaps. But you need uh, to determine if you achieved your original objectives or not and document that. And that definitely adds to your credibility and shows um, your professional design of a workshop. So I hope these things are helpful for you. This is what I'm going to be looking for when I evaluate your workshop. And certainly you want to do your best work if you include this as an artifact for your portfolio. One other comment about the artifacts for portfolios. You will want to go back and refer to readings in the course or in that textbook and use that as the research base for this artifact. When you're writing your reflection for the MAED and Instructional Technology, you need to refer to published research to justify what you do in your uh, workshop. Uh, you don't need to have a laundry list of um, articles, but you need to be able to, in a natural way, describe what you did based on what Morrison and Lowther recommend for integrating technology in the classroom. If you have questions, be sure and let me know. Thank you.